I've already made several videos about turning straw and biosludge from the city sediment basins into gas, but about each of these fuels separately. In this video, I'll talk about turning their mixture into gas. Also, about producing phosphorus potassium fertilizers which can be safely used to fertilize fields. And this is done in an environment-friendly way, with all the required EU measurements for harmfulness. Surprisingly, the researchers did not dry biosludge, but only pressed it on an auger. By mixing it with wheat straw, they achieved a fuel moisture content of 30% and successfully turned it into gas for a cogeneration plant. This meticulous research was proven several years ago on a 100 kilowatt and then on a 6 megawatt fluidized bed gasifier. The results showed that environmentally friendly gas can be made in countries where wood chips are not commercially available. For example, in countries like Moldova or Georgia. Besides, strategic raw materials for the production of superphosphate fertilizers or just an excellent fertilizer in the form of ash can be obtained. I have made several videos about how profitable it is to produce phosphorus. It is a strategic raw material today. We can gasify the city biosludge from sediment basins, get fertilizer and increase crop yields while other countries are facing famine. If you can't find a video about biosludge gasification, write in the comments and I'll give you the link. The world has entered a crisis, we are running out of resources. Fundamental basic resource is hydrocarbons, what cities and our civilization stand on. Humans have taken over the planet placing themselves at the top of the food pyramid. The population is increasing, the number of electrical appliances is growing, and more and more energy is being consumed. Not surprisingly, we are running out of non-renewable resources. In order to heat our apartments and have electricity, it is necessary to constantly burn hydrocarbons at large 100 megawatt power plants. This energy has to come from somewhere. Oil, gas, and coal are getting more expensive. Some countries have none at all. Energy prices are rising 5-10- and 20-fold. The price of gasoline jumped 100 times in 100 years. It will be even more fun in the future. Where will the energy come from, especially in hydrocarbon poor countries? If there is no coal, oil, or gas, they have to be bought. But where will the money come from? The countries of the golden billion will get funds from selling technology and technological devices or simply robbing others, as they did in the past. And what to do, for example, in Moldova? There is a solution to produce gas and phosphorus from straw mixed with biosludge. The gas will be fed to cogeneration plants to get electricity. And phosphorus can be used to produce superphosphate fertilizers or sold as a raw material to fertilizer businesses. I've been to Moldova, there are no wood chips there at all. It's a country of fields, like in the video. Just fields around the roads, that's what the whole country looks like. There's nothing to burn. If we're talking about an industrial facility, not a small business, there's nowhere to get fuel. I've been to the biosludge plant in Chisinau. By the way, I even made a video. This is what the feces of the Moldovan capital look like. Bio sludge is squeezed, then taken to the fields where it settles, and then turns into peat. This fuel behaves like peat when gasified, but it contains 28% phosphorus compared to about 8% in peat, extracted in a few countries. Just because there is nowhere to get fuel, such as wood chips, for industrial gasifiers in Moldova, I came to the bio sludge plant. I wanted to understand if it was possible to get fuel there. It turned out that there are plenty of fermented bio sludge fields near Chisinau where ready to use fuel could be just dug. For example, Denmark accumulates 0.14 million tons of biosludge every year. Europe, North America, and Japan accumulate 30 million tons, and the world accumulates about 50 million tons per year in terms of dry matter. Biosludge is usually transported to fields where it ferments, but it is possible to remove this unnecessary operation and gasify it immediately on site after pressing and mixing with straw. Fluidized bed gasifiers scale well. And it's just what you need for a small cogeneration plant, example, for 50 or 300 megawatts. No other layer gasifier will produce as much energy. One kilogram of straw and one kilogram of peat give as much energy as a kilo of wood chips. And a one cubic meter of wood chips gives about a megawatt of energy. Hundreds of thousands or millions of tons of straw and stalks of corn and other plants accumulate every year. Biosludge accumulates in sediment basins every day. It is a kind of permanent hydrocarbon resource. It just needs to be harnessed. Recently I had a conversation with a scholar about using phosphorus and ash right from gasifiers as a fertilizer in the fields. He told me that such ash could contain harmful impurities. This thought stuck in my head, and while reading literature one day, I came across a way to get rid of impurities. That is, to make ash with phosphorus safe to be applied to the soil. This is a huge puzzling study in two parts based on a number of practical experiments. I had to study it for several days, and now I can bring it to you in a concise video. The experiments went like this. Bio sludge and straw were turned into gas together on a fluidized bed gasifier. There are different kinds of fluidized bed gasifiers. There are those where the gas flies out of the reactor to the cyclone and goes further. There are designs where ash with unburned carbon returns to the gasifier from the bottom of the cyclone. 
there are the ones with two fluidized bed gasifiers. They safely gasify 100% plastic garbage. I've made video reviews of such devices. In the study I'm talking about, the authors used the second type, where the cyclone returned fuel with ash back to the gasifier. Biosludge was taken from three different cities in Denmark for reasons of clarity. First, the researchers started up a 100 kilowatts pilot plant and then checked their invention in an industrial plant with a capacity of 6 megawatts per hour of heat. The first stage of the experiments lasted 133 hours. During this time, 8,600 kilograms of fuel was burned. The gasifier load varied from 62% to 100%. Straw with biosludge was burnt. There was a lot of ash, but, luckily, it didn't center. The efficiency of the device was 90%. It would be more correct to call the gasifier a circulating fluidized bed gasifier because the ash went back to the gasifier with fuel from the cyclone. A temperature of 750 degrees was maintained. Why 750 degrees? I told in the last detailed video review about a straw-fueled gasifier. Researchers chose this gasifier because it is suitable for a variety of waste fuels. It works, in particular, on dry manure and other waste products. As the study shows, both fuels enrich ash with their ash elements making it more assimilable for plants. Straw ash enriched the fertilizer with potassium, while biosludge enriched it with phosphorus. In Denmark, a 6 megawatt circulating fluidized bed gasifier, here and after referred to as just fluidized bed gasifier, is installed at a coal-fired cogeneration plant to replace coal with gas from waste fuels. The video you are watching is from the Asnes power plant in Nallenborg city. This gasifier uses regular quartz sand without any additives as the filler. Its size is less than 0.25 mm, 50% of this mass is sand smaller than 0.13 mm. This type of gasifier may work on fuels with up to 30% humidity and no larger than 5 mm in size. Different mixtures with different percentages of straw were made for the tests. Look at table 2. We see that little straw was added. For example, mix ST column shows that the straw was 30% by weight, and the moisture content of the fuel reached 30%. Apparently, this amount of straw was enough not to forcibly dry biosludge. Its moisture content dropped to about 70% after pressing, and if mixed with dry straw, the moisture content dropped further to 30%. This is the reason to mix fuels. It is the moisture content that affects how much straw should be added to the mixture. Table 3 shows the chemical composition of the fuel. Table 7 shows the composition of the gas. As can be seen in mix ST column, the fuel contained 30% of straw and 70% biosludge. Total moisture was 30%. The gas was not very caloric because it was heavily ballasted with carbon dioxide and contained almost no hydrogen. The reason for this is the high 30% humidity, the top for this gasifier type. High humidity also caused the 10 times higher tar output than in tests with other fuels of other humidities, table 6, A. Figure 9 shows the tar composition. In general, it did not differ from ordinary wood tar, table 7. Table 8 shows the efficiency of carbon conversion in the gasifier. Some of the carbon is lost with the ash, some go into the tar, and some go into the gas. While a mixture of straw with biosludge was fed, the efficiency of the gasifier was high and reached 90% at hot gas. The gas was slightly less caloric and contained more tar, but this allowed to avoid drying biosludge. It was only pressed, so the technological scheme was free from expenses for drying. More tar due to the low gasification temperature of 750 degrees and high humidity will not be a problem if the gas is burned on a cogeneration plant burner. Now let's talk about ash to fertilize plants. The ash was tested both for its composition and by putting it into pots with plants. The tests were successful. In addition to potassium and phosphorus, it contained magnesium, calcium, and sulfur, which are also valuable nutrients for plants. The heavy metal content in the ash is shown in Table 4. See the mix ST line. Mixing straw with biosludge led to lower heavy metal content and better phosphorus and carbon uptake by the plants compared to ashes from biosludge or straw taken separately. Thus, the mixture of straw with biosludge has proven to be an excellent fuel for both gas production and ash decontamination. It can be used both for the production of superphosphate fertilizers and as a fertilizer as is. If you'd like to order a design of such a gasifier, my WhatsApp is below the video. See you soon.